Good morning everyone. In the last class we studied about protection of transformers and generators. Now we go for protection of feeders and transmission lines. As we know that the length of power transmission line, the feeder is the length is greaterly long and enough and it runs through open atmosphere. You know that what is our feeder? A feeder is a conductor which transmits the power from generating station to substation or any distribution substation. As the length of electrical power transmission line is generally long enough and it runs open the atmosphere. The probability of chances of the fault occurrence on electrical power transmission line is much higher than that of electrical power transformers and alternators. That is why a transmission line requires much more protective schemes than transformer and alternator. That is why a transmission line requires much more power protection schemes than a transformer and an alternator. Protection of line should have some special features such as during the fault. The only circuit breaker closest to the fault point should be tripped. Whenever fault occurs in protection of lines, there should be some special features for that. During the fault, the only circuit breaker closest to the fault point should be tripped. If another one tripped, then different lines will be subjected to different faults. If the far away sub circuit breaker, when it will be tripped, the nearest circuit breaker has to be tripped. If the circuit breaker close to the fault point fails to trip, the circuit breaker just next to the circuit breaker will trip as the backup. It is known as backup protection. The operating time of relay associated with the protection of lines should be minimum as possible in order to prevent unnecessary tripping of circuit breakers associated with the other healthy parts of the power system. These above mentioned requirements causes protection of transmission lines is much different from protection of transformer and alternators and other equipment of power system. The main three methods of transmission line protections, transmission line and feeders protection mainly three methods. One is time graded over current protection, second one is differential protection, third one is distance protection. Distance protection in the sense impedance protection, impedance relays we are using. Let us go for time graded over current protection. First we go for protection of radial feeder. What is radial feeder which radiated from the substation in one direction only the power can flow. Radial, loop, ring main, three types of feeders are there. How to protect radial feeder? Let us go for that. In radial feeder the power flows in only one direction only which is from source to load. This type of feeders can be easily protected by using either definite time relays or inverse time relays. Either definite time relays or inverse time relays we can use to protect the radial feeder. How to protect the radial feeder by definite time relay? This protection scheme is very simple. Here total line is divided into different sections and each section is provided with definite time relay. Definite time relay in sense for a particular period of time it will operate after if any fault occur in the feeder or transmission line after a certain period of time whatever we set on the relay after that it will trip the circuit breaker. The relay nearest to the end of the line has minimum time setting. The relay nearest to the end of the line has minimum time setting while time setting of other relay is successively increased towards the source. For example, suppose there is a source at a point A in the figure below you can see that at point D the circuit breaker is installed with a definite time of relay operation 0 0.5 second. At point D a circuit breaker, circuit breaker 3 is installed with a definite time relay operation of 0 0.5 seconds successively at point C another circuit breaker 2 is installed with a definite time of relay operation 1 second. The next circuit breaker CB1 is installed at point B which is nearest of the point A. 
at the point B the relay is set time of operation is 0 1.5 second now assume a fault occurs at point F due to this fault the fault current flows through all the current transformers or CTs connected in the line but as the time of operation of relay at point D is minimum the circuit breaker 3 associated with the relay will trip first to isolate the faulty zone from the nearest part of the line in case of due to any reason circuit breaker 3 fails to trip then next higher timed relay will operate to initiate the associated circuit breaker to trip in this case circuit breaker 2 will trip if circuit breaker 2 also fails to trip then next circuit breaker that is circuit breaker 1 will trip to isolate major portion of the line the various advantages of definite time line protection radial feeder protection the main advantage of this scheme is simplicity the second major advantage is during a fault only nearest circuit breaker towards the source from the fault point will operate to isolate the specific position of the line some disadvantages of definite time line protection definite time protection of radial feeders if the number of sections in the line is quite large the time setting of relay nearest to the source would be very long so during any fault nearer to the source will take much time to be isolated this may cause severe damage for the system now over current line protection by inverse time relays the radial feeder protection by using inverse time relays the drawback in discussed in the definite time over current relay protection scheme can be easily overcome by using inverse time relays